Good evening, everyone. It's so wonderful to be here this evening. Uh, I'd like to say good evening to those of you who are coming to us virtually, and it's so good to see uh, people here in person. It is wonderful to see so many of you here. We are socially distanced and uh, completely COVID compliant, but it's still wonderful to see so many of you. Um, with that said, uh, we will begin the meeting, and I ask you to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the United, 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 States, United States of America, to the, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. Okay, let's uh, resume the meeting. Um, I would like to, uh, before we begin, note that um, we met, Mayor and Council met on March 10th, uh, 2021, in an executive session um, pursuant to the Sunshine Act. We met to discuss personnel matters. Agenda items, uh, items have been uh, added to the agenda. Item 7D, 7E, 8B, 8C, uh, they have been added to this agenda because these items came in uh, after the original agenda was published and these are items that need to be uh, dealt with for the uh, benefit of the municipality. Um, we have some items on the agenda that I think are going to generate comments. So I would ask everyone to please uh, keep in mind that we are going to adhere strictly to our protocol and to the rules tonight. So uh, we will go in order. What we'll do is we will go through each item and then uh, we will ask for public comment. And of course that the uh, manager will explain the protocol for that and the limitations. And then there will be board comment. And I ask everyone, the public and uh, council to uh, please wait to be recognized because when we do these meetings uh, virtually, it is uh, difficult. Uh, sometimes the screen freezes if we interrupt each other. So we will uh, please ask to be recognized. I'll recognize you and then please let the individual speak uninterrupted. Um, having said that, um, I am very, very pleased to announce that we have um, some presentations and proclamations this evening. And um, we have uh, two uh, to discuss this evening. One of them is the uh, recipient of the Clean Sweep Certificate. We, have, we are fortunate to have uh, Faith Malazzo here tonight, and I would ask you, Faith, if you could please come up here and uh, explain, tell us a little bit about the uh, Clean Sweep Certificate. Thank you so much. You're going to have to, excuse me, you have to use this microphone over here. And if you could stand there so that they can see you on the virtual meeting. Perfect. Hi, I'm Faith Malazzo. Um, we just, in this year, 2021, we have initiated what's called the Clean Sweep Initiative. I don't think that's on. Oh. She removed her mask just for that or no? No? Okay. Uh, okay, I'll try to talk louder. Can you hear me? Okay, I see all that. So the Clean Sweep Initiative is something that the Penn Hills Anti Litter Group. Excuse me, Faith. Okay, um, anyway, uh, it's new for 2021. What we want to do is recognize businesses in Penn Hills that we, the volunteers, feel are doing a good job of just keeping their area clean. Doesn't have to be perfect, but we just want to recognize businesses that they're taking pride in Penn Hills, just as members of the anti-litter group are. So uh, if you feel a business is deserving of this, it's just a certificate, but um, if you feel a business deserves to be called out for this, please um, look us up on Facebook or you can contact us on email at gmail.com. So, and I want to just thank all the businesses who are doing the right thing. 
I would like to ask you to stay there for one moment and I would like to recognize the very first recipient in Penn Hills. Um, the, uh, it is a, uh, one of my, it's my favorite coffee shop in Penn Hills. It is called Griff's Grounds. Could we please ask you to come on up and um, uh, accept the uh, certificate? Here we go. Now we can see the team. There we go. Hello. I don't know if you can see it, but their their sweatshirts say Griff Brown. Uh, you want to say your cafe? Okay. <laughs> and where is it located? It's 1817 Leechburg Road in Penn Hills. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and I'm Griff Ann Coleman Brewer. And I'm Keith Coleman Brewer. Yes. And we're the owners, the CEO and manager of Griff Brown's Coffee, located at 1817 Leesburg Road. And the fabulous municipality of Penn Hills. You can call us at 412 6668 and one of us give back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. And the best selection of tea and coffees anywhere. Congratulations, Jeff. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. 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 Uh, just stay tuned. We'll let the trip know about the winners. It'll again it'll also be on the Facebook page. But if you have someone to nominate, um, please let us know. And please keep Penn Hills beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Faith, for all that you do. Thank you, Faith. At this time, I would also like to recognize. Uh, we have here the uh, a certificate that is going to be uh, awarded this evening. I would like to note that whereas dumping and littering are problems that impact the quality of life in every community, and whereas littering harms the natural environment by polluting our streams and waterways, and litter cleanups cost thousands of tax dollars and untold volunteer hours, and whereas Penn Hills resident Frank Allison has dedicated himself to anti-litter efforts throughout Penn Hills for many years and has a passion and concern for ending litter in Penn Hills that is worthy of public acknowledgement. And now, therefore, on behalf of Penn Hills Municipality, I am pleased to recognize and honor resident Frank Allison and declare Tuesday, March 16th, 2021, as Frank Allison Day in Penn Hills Please join me in recognizing this outstanding citizen for his accomplishments and contributions to the Penn Hills community. We'll just do that. And Frank, this is for you. And please stay up here because we also have absolutely the honor uh, to have with us uh, count our county councilman, Councilman Futulis, and we I would ask you if you would kindly please come up. You can hear me? Hey, I'm a little louder than uh most people, so I can do this well. Um, I've been a member of the anti-litter group for at least three to four years now, and I've seen the work through Facebook, what this group has done. 
I've noticed Frank does above and beyond what most members of the anti litter group have done. He not only picks up papers, he, he, clean, he cuts down trees, he clears things. Uh, his recent one was on Allegheny River Boulevard, just happened to be across the street from my property. And I seen the picture, I said, hey, that's, that's across the street from my property. And he cut down all the trees single handedly. And I'm like, my God, what, what kind of person could do that by themselves? And I thought, I said, here's a man that's dedicated to this community for cleanup. Some people may say you're obsessed, but I think you're a great citizen and, and the people in this country should represent you as the person that cares about their community and everything around you. And, and I mean this sincerely when I say, Penn Hills is looking for somebody in public works. I really think you're the best guy for that job because I would certainly put you on the, on the litter detail, that's for sure, because uh, I've seen your work and I'm so proud to be here and honored to be here. And I've talked to him on the phone uh, uh, last week or so, and, and I just can't believe this is the first time in my 13 years on county council that I've been able to give somebody an award like this other than a, 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 a Eagle Scout or something, or, or winning a football team or something. But this is an individual that has just gone above and beyond as a citizen of this community. I'm proud of you. Even what it is. <laughs> so I'll just read a little portion of this proclamation here at the bottom. This is This is on behalf of Allegheny County. It was read into the record at the meeting two weeks ago. And it says, now therefore be it resolved that I, Allegheny County Councilman Nick Fritolos, do hereby recognize Frank Allison for his community and to his anti-litter efforts throughout the municipality of Penn Hills. And we recommend, we commend him for all of the, the efforts that he has done in the Penn Hills community. And Frank, after this meeting, I'm more than happy to give you my address at my house. If you drive past and you think you something needs done, you don't feel free to go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. And I do just want to say that, um, you know, there are things that we see Frank do when we're out there on uh, litter pickups with him or things that we see on Facebook or sometimes when you're driving by. But there are also things that Frank does that I don't know that he knows that anybody would ever know about them. And so I don't mean to embarrass him, but for example, I've had calls from Frank. Uh, one afternoon, he, we went to a, a construction junction and picked up uh, trash cans. He has all sorts of little things like that that he does that the public doesn't even know about, and it's not his intention for you to know about. But I think that we absolutely uh, owe it to ourselves and owe it to Frank to recognize him. So it is my honor, and I'm so happy to be here tonight to be part of this, and thank you again so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. I have to also add Congratulations, that Frank. Thank you, I'd also like to add, Mayor, that if by chance you actually bring the anti litter group in as a group, and you give me the names of the people, I'd be more than happy to come back here and honor them in a the group. Thank you. We'll do that. Thank you so much. Does anyone from council want to make a comment to Frank? Just uh, yeah. I, I wanted to say congratulations, Frank, and I echo the sentiments of our uh, illustrious Nick Fratulis that if we we could give Frank a truck and a garbage can and a shovel and put him on the payroll, I, I'd vote for that in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> this, Frank. Is Deputy, this is Deputy Mayor Sapp. I want to say thank you, Frank. Met you a couple years ago when you first started, and. I just want to say you've done a phenomenal job. Keep up the good work, and Penn Hill certainly appreciates you, and I personally certainly appreciate you. So thanks again, and congratulations. You have your own day now. Woohoo! I'd like to say congratulations to Frank, too. You do a wonderful, wonderful job for our community, Frank. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. I just want to say one of the best things about being out in the streets is I get to meet people, okay? We have a lot of really nice people in Penn Hills. I don't know if you can hear me, but I mean, I have met so many nice people and that's that's one of the things that motivate me, you know? 
Um, there's a lot of great people that live here. Even though we have litter, we have, you know, it's everywhere. It's not just Ben Hills, and we all know that. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, roll call. Mayor Calabrese. Present. Councilman Petrucci. Present. Councilman Gutsy. He's there. Right. Present. Deputy Mayor Sapp. Present. Councilman Pacora. Present. May I get a motion for approval of the minutes? I'll make a motion for approval of the minutes. Thank you. May I get a second? Second the motion. Uh, roll call. Councilman Petrucci. Yes. Councilman Getze. Yes. Deputy Mayor Sapp. <clears throat> having some technical difficulties, it looks like, Scott. Councilman Pecora. Yes. Reese. Yes. Wait, did you call? Did someone? Did you call me? I did have technical difficulties. Yes, I, I did, Deputy Mayor. So I, um, I could record your vote if you want to make it now. Okay. What was I voting on? I'm sorry. The approval of the minutes. Oh yes. Yes. Okay. May I get a motion on the ratification of expenditures? I'll make a motion for the master expenditure summary dated March 15th, 2021. Thank you. May I get a second? Second. second. Uh, thank you. Roll call. Councilman Getsy? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sapp? Yes. Councilman Pecora? Yes. Mayor Calabrese? Yes. Councilman Petrucci? Yes. Yeah, the um, the expenses were ratified. Okay, thank you. May I get a motion for item seven A? Madam Mayor, I'll make a motion for item seven A, approval of the agreement with TFM Financial Advisors for Phase One Sewer System Valuation. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, may I get a second? Second. Thank you. Um, any public comment? I would like to make a comment. Yes, will you please state your name and address? My name is Bill Mouch, 1335 Maple Avenue, Verona, PA. Why don't we look for the federal government and some of this COVID relief funds to help with our sewage program? Number one. Number two, if I was selling my house, I would want to estimate what it's worth. If I'm not selling it, why would I buy or pay for an assessor to come and do that? I think the only reason we're doing this is to sell this system, and I think it's a bad idea. Thank you. Thank you. Any further public comment? Any comment from council? Yes. I, I am in favor of uh, having that study done because it's just going to give us an idea of what the system is worth it doesn't lead to the conclusion that we're going to sell the system it's a study the study may show the system's worth nothing so i i, uh, I think the study should be done just to give us an idea of what the system's worth let the record reflect that those were comments from councilman uh, getsy any further comment from council yes this is deputy mayor Sapp. I like Thank to make a comment. I like to say that I too agree that Penn Hill should know what our source system is worth. I'm not interested in privatizing anything. However, I do feel strongly that we should definitely um, explore options so that we are able to come back to the residents and, and say when they complain about um, sore bills or sore problems that we can say that we definitely explored all of our options. I'm not interested though in privatizing at this time. 
However, I am interested in knowing the worth of our sewer system, which I feel that we should have that information. I feel it's a sad shame that we don't know the worth of our system. Madam, Mayor, Madam Mayor, I agree with what uh, Deputy Mayor Sapp said and, and uh, Councilman Getze, uh, I believe in the same thing. We should get an evaluation. Our, our uh, residents of this community have dumped a lot of money into our sewage system and um, we need to know how much the system is worth, uh, what the evaluation is, and um, even for insurance purposes. Uh, if something, a catastrophe was to happen at one of these plants, we need to know exactly what it's worth and what it's insured for and if we have enough money to pay for the damages. If we're underinsured, uh, you know yourself that we're, we're gonna have to do something, possibly assess the community for the damages uh, that were done that weren't paid for by the insurance company. So I, I think an evaluation of it, um, and just thought, just trying to explain this in general to people, I, a lot of you know I collect uh, collector cars, and um, I got an evaluation of each one of those cars. So when they, something happened to those cars, I get my full 100%, not 80% of what that car is worth. So I do believe this is this is a uh, a good way to get the valuation. I'm not in favor of selling anything at right now, and I don't think there's anything anybody else on this council is in favor of selling or giving anything away. Um, but we need to do an evaluation uh, for uh, this sewer system just to see what it's worth. Thank you. Any other comment from uh, council? Uh, in my opinion, I think that that's a bad analogy to use the insurance analogy because uh, that's not the purpose and that's not what happens when you insure something. Let's be honest, the only purpose of doing this appraisal is the same reason why you would appraise something, why you would have your house appraised. We have workers from the Water Control, uh, Water Pollution Control Department, these people are our neighbors. These people are part of our municipality. Don't kid yourself. When someone tells you they're not trying to appraise it for sale and the purpose of sale was for privatization, let's take a look at the path we're going on here. Anybody, any citizen who's watching right now, I think you need to tell 10 of your neighbors to watch what's happening. Little by little, we're chipping away at everything, that, all of our assets. Oh, we just wanted to appraise McKinley. Oh, we're looking at the senior center. We're looking at the library. Now we're looking at water pollution control department. We're, we're, we're looking at the sewer system. People have to stay awake because it is frightening what's happening here. I feel like I'm looking in the rear view mirror and I'm watching what's happening to the municipality as I watch what happened to the school district. They were very, very short-sighted back then, and I feel we're on a very frightening path. We're going to spend $8,000. We've got what we're calling a surplus of $40,000, and you can tell me that's not that $8,000 isn't going to come out of that surplus. In a budget that's over $30 million, our surplus is pennies. I think it's irresponsible, and I think it's frightening what we're uh, on, on a path for. We have no business spending $8,000 of taxpayers' money for something that we don't intend to do. If you truly mean that you don't intend to privatize this, then why on God's green earth would you spend $8,000 for something you don't intend to do? I will be voting no for this, uh, for this uh, ag agreement because I think it is setting us on a bad course. And I want to go down in history, the Pauline Calabrese did not set us on a course to take each and every one of our assets and we're just privatizing everything and selling everything off. I'm very proud that the people that work in that department are my neighbors. These are people I see every day. These are people you see. These are people that care about it. I'll finish up here, but let me just say, in my opinion, this is going down the road to saying something akin to, hey, let's sell the house so we don't have a mortgage payment. But then you're very short-sighted because you want to stay in that same house. You now have a landlord who can raise your rate at any time. And sometimes I hear people say things like, oh, let's get out from under the thumb of Alcasan. 
I have no clue what that even means. Because Alcosan will always be here. We will have, no matter what you do with this system, we will not have any control over these rates. So I personally will be voting no against this because I believe in Penn Hills. Roll call. Mayor, Deputy Mayor, Mayor. say something? Yes, Council, well, yes, Councilman Getsy. You started out by saying, let's be honest. I think three of us have been honest to say, we want to know what the valuation of the sewer system is so we can make decisions based on that. Nobody's raised the issue, and as a fact, three of us, two of us have talked about not, not selling the system and maintaining it. The system may be worth nothing. You've made a very emotional plea to the public, but I want to say, let's look at the practical side of this. We want to know the value of that system. Thank you. Roll call. Deputy Mayor Saab? Yes. Councilman Pecora? No. Mayor Calabrese? No. Councilman Petrucci? Yes. Councilman Getzi? Yes. Item 7A approved. May I get a motion for item 7B? I'll make a motion for item 7B, approve the tentative agreement with professional associates of the Parabex IAFF Local 5167. May I get a second? Second. Any public comment? Any comment from council? Yes, I, I have a comment. Um, I would just like to say, I would like um, for Diane Fitzhenry, the director of the EMS department, to please um, speak on behalf of item 7B. Diane Fitzhenry, is she on the Zoom yes. call? Yes. yes, I am. Diane, could you please um, talk about item 7B? Certainly. Um, this is a two-year agreement with the Professional Association of Paramedics that was negotiated by the municipal manager. Um, there are only a few items that are changing in the contract. Um, one, one item is how we provide uniform allowances for them. Uh, another item is how um, the lowest man on the totem pole, uh, if somebody calls off or is unable to report to work, is always stuck staying. They're, they're going to change um, the process for that type of overtime. Um, the other item, of course, are wages for this year and for next year. And the final, I, um, there's a bereavement clause and there's also a residency clause. Um, as most of you know, Penn Hills EMS was formed in 1974 as a division of the Penn Hills Police Department. Um, what those two items, the bereavement and the residency clause do is actually pr provide parity with what's in the existing police contract. Um, I know that residency has been an issue. It's, it's actually more of an issue for the municipality than it is for the union. Um, in, in an effort to keep wages at, at a relatively similar rate to what was offered to the other unions, uh, and the manager was able to negotiate with them regarding the uh, residency. So the language in the residency clause would allow all full-time employee, employees of Penn Hills EMS to live within a five mile radius of any of the borders. And that's taken directly from the current police contract. Um, the reason that that's important is we have over the last six or eight months uh, found it extremely difficult to recruit uh, new employees. Um, we have between 13 and 15 full-time employees on a regular basis. Right now we are down to 11. So we are short a couple of medics. Uh, we have advertised through our normal routes in the newspaper. We've sent the notices to all of the colleges in the area that teach the paramedic program. We've sent copies of the job ads to 
our partner hospitals so that they could place them in the EMS rooms of each of the facilities um, so that as other ambulance crews come in and out, they can, they can see the job ad. Um, recruitment in Pennsylvania is down across the board for paramedics. Um, we have always offered a, a, a decent salary and good fringe, fringe benefits. So in the past, it has been easy to recruit. Um, most of our neighbors now, even though they're nonprofit corporations or municipal authorities, are now matching us dollar for dollar salary wise. And um, they also have good fringe benefits. So people that we would have gotten in the past were not getting. We've had, we have several um, part time employees that like working here but they are already established in other communities with children and other school districts. And as much as they like working here and would wanna come here full time, they can't in good conscience pull their children out of the school districts that they're in currently. Um, the, the mayor commented about some of the disasters or issues with the school district. And, you know, I was born and raised in this town. I've been here all 63 years of my life. There's, there's nobody that supports the community more than I do. But I also need to have good qualified people um, that can provide the services that we need to provide to maintain that level of quality and good patient care that the residents of this town pay for and that they've come to expect from us. Um, you know, Penn, Penn Hills has always had a great reputation in the EMS business. And um, we, we receive lots of thank you notes from the residents. We also receive letters of thanks and, and gratitude and, and the job well done from some of the medical providers. So, you know, our standard of care is above what other places offer. And I'd like to keep it that way. But to do that, we need to be able to retain employees or to recruit good employees and to retain them. And residency has really become an issue. So um, while the union in itself did not push the residency issue, um, as the, the manager of the EMS division, the, the supervisor, um, I brought it up as an option because of, of the necessity to be able to hire good qualified people. I mean, if, if it were a different type of position, you might be able to get a significant number of applicants, but when you're looking for the specific job skills that are required for EMS, um, it's harder and harder to find good qualified people. And you know we don't want to run a mediocre ambulance service. We want we want to always put our best foot forward and provide a top quality service to the residents of Penn Hills. And I think by allowing this change in the contract, it will it will serve the municipality far far more than it would serve the union. Like I said, I have 15 um, right now. I have 11 full time employees. 10 of those full-time employees currently live in Penn Hills. The one that does not live here hasn't been employed here long enough to be required to live here. Of the six EMTs that I have, they're all part-time. Two of them live here. Of, um, of the 10 part-time medics, three of them live here. So there's a, there's a good mix, but to maintain that high quality, uh, people just don't want to pull their children out of other school districts to move here. If you have specific questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Um, you know, this is 20, 2020 into 2021 has been an excruciating year for EMS. We have seen a major increase in our call volume. We've been able to keep our staff safe. We've been able to keep the residents safe and healthy. Uh, with, within the confines of, of our um, skill set and, and our um, rules of practice. Um, I don't know what more I can say other than I have a lot of really great people working for me and I'd like to keep it that way because 
the more proficient and better prepared we are, the better we can take care of your residents. Diane, Thank you. Thank Diane, you. Diane, I'm looking at these numbers, uh, what you just said. So uh, nine and six, you got 15 people that are part, you got nine part-time uh, paramedics, six part-time EMTs. So basically 50% for, you know, about 50% of our workforce doesn't, isn't obligated to work in Penn Hills as it is right now. Am I correct in assuming that? Yes, the part-time employees are not required to live here. Only the full-time employees are. So, so you're going to hire, from what I understand, also two paramedics uh, that are part-time and three more full-time. Correct? That's correct, and one additional EMT. Uh, what we try to do is promote from within. So, as we hire part-time paramedics or I'm sorry, part-time EMTs and paramedics. Uh, if they do want to move into a full-time position, certainly we promote from the part-time medics into that. We also have several of our EMTs who have either recently completed a paramedic program or will be completing them. So this gives them, you know, uh, a way to move up in, in this existing system. They're people that we're familiar with, we're pleased with their work, and if they're able to um, get their state certification as a paramedic and their national registry, then you know the natural progression is to move them into a full-time position. And what does a, what does a full-time paramedic make uh, on a yearly basis? Uh, I don't have those numbers in front of me, but the, the current wages are about $30 an hour once they max out. Uh, after what, 10 years? No, that's after like four years. They start out at about $23 an hour. So you're roughly around $48,000, $50,000 a year. Give or, give or take. Diane, this is Deputy Mayor Stapp again. Can you just um, elaborate on what your overtime is looking like? And then um, secondly, what about health and safety? Obviously, if you're short staff, then our paramedics are working overtime, right? So what, yes, overtime like and what about the health and safety of the EMT and paramedics that we currently have? Well, la last year we were $50,000 over budget on overtime alone. Um, what, what happens for every paramedic that we are short, when I put the schedule together, that leaves approximately 22 shifts per person open on the schedule that need to be filled either with part-time people or by posting my full-time people for overtime. Um, there, there are national studies and there's a recent study out of the University of Pittsburgh by Dr. Patterson. Um, that's looking specifically at EMS professionals who work long hours. Uh, fatigue, fatigue, burnout, vehicle accidents, work injuries, medical mistakes all increase the longer that the staff works. Um, from, from a financial side of things, um, Anything after their initial 16 hours of overtime in a two week pay period, they go from a time and a half rate to a double time rate. So it, it truly behooves the municipality to keep the number between 13 and 15 on the full time on the full time side of the house so that we don't incur that double time cost. Um, yeah. And after the year that we've had. I mean, everybody everybody likes a pay raise and everybody likes money because it helps us survive and, and take care of the needs of our family. But there's actually a point where doesn't matter anymore. the money doesn't matter because there's so much fatigue and so much stress and anxiety in this job. Well, so it, it seems clear we need to have more paramedics, right? That seems clear. Yes. Any other uh, pub any other public comment? Any other comment from council? I would like to thank Diane and Scott for a very arduous uh, time coming to this agreement. I'm pleased that you've come to the agreement. I'm pleased that we're able to approve it this evening. And thank you, Diane. Thank you.
and, and Diane, this is Deputy Mayor again. I just want to ask you, so when you talked about recruitment, you you have tried to recruit within Penn Hills, is that correct? And and what about the high schools and um, anywhere in Penn Hills? Can you tell me what what your efforts have been for recruitment? Okay. Um, recruitment involves ads, newspapers, ads on our website, ads on both the municipality and EMS's Facebook page. As I said, reaching out to the schools that teach the paramedic programs, the hospitals. Penn Hills is involved with the school districts and a couple cyber schools where we provide a program for their career day to let, let the students know that a paramedic position is, a, is an alternative to you know, a, another type of, of uh, employment. Um, we, we actually work with most of the schools in the area because as part of a paramedic curriculum, they not only have to do clinical time at a hospital, but they have to do field training with, with an ambulance service. So we routinely have students from the Center for Emergency Medicine at Pitt and uh, Penn State Fayette and IUP and some of the other places here at our station uh, working under the supervision of our paramedics. And we have been able to hire some of those students in the past. Um, the, the 11th person that I mentioned, the 11th full-time person, we hired him after graduation from the Center for Emergency Medicine. And as I said, he's not currently a resident because he hasn't been here long enough for that requirement to kick in. Um, Thank you, Diane. I, I appreciate the explanation. It's just some, Sometimes, you know, um, our residents just need clarity on exactly, you know, what's happening internally so that they can clearly understand that it's not that, you know, members of council are trying to take everything away from Penn Hills or to re remove all of the jobs from the people who live here. It's just very difficult to recruit sometimes. And, you know, it's just not worth risking the lives of our residents who do pay for the service and require the service. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you. I have a question for the solicitor. And if this is not in, I don't want to put you on the spot. So if you don't have the answer, I, I'm fine with that. So right now, uh, the director just said that the union was not asking for a residency. And the negotiation back and forth, as I understand it, was an increase in pay, but the union wasn't seeking the residency. So if this were to get voted down tonight, does that just mean that we go back to the table, right? Correct. There's a, there's a negotiated tentative agreement, but it has to get approved by mayor and council to become a firm agreement. And if mayor and council are not in uh, agreement with what's been negotiated into a tentative agreement, they have the right to vote that down. But that doesn't mean, so what we then would do is we go back to the table and we could do things like we could, we could say, look, instead of having all these part-time people, let's give uh, some, let's turn them into full-time people and let's add more money so that we can add more employees. Let's do some more things. It doesn't mean that it ends here. It just means that we go back to negotiation, correct? Correct. Because otherwise then we're stuck with the same agreement with the same part-time people. It's just that we just lost the residency and we have bargained. We just haven't bargained away. Okay. I get it. Um, Excuse me one second. I, I, let me, let me, try to clarify something and I think I asked this question one other time I don't think the municipality can afford 30 some people at $23 an hour or $30 an hour I don't know Scott is that an, is that is that something we discussed before about that I, I'm not sure what you're asking about the part-timers yeah the reason why we have the part-timers is, is is probably to cut our expenses a little bit isn't it uh, true Diane or Scott whoever wants to answer that I mean, the part-timers fill in the schedule. I mean, Diane would know more about it than I, but I mean, we rely heavily on part-timers right now. Diane, is that can, is your budget able to absorb 30-some people at $23 an hour? Not the current, not the current budget. Um, yeah. I 
finance director would be able to speak more to that than me. Um, but we do utilize the part-time people uh, because we can pay them straight salary, no fringe benefits. And unless they work a huge number of hours, they're not eligible for any overtime. Well, see, then there's our answer right there. We have a problem. We have a problem with staffing. And the answer doesn't mean you get rid of residency because nobody, no, the union isn't telling us that's a problem. We tried that with the police officers. We, we waived the residency and we still, we, we can't even get minorities on, uh, on the police force. We've already waived it. So maybe what we need to do is take a look at our budget and let's really pay people. When you say 23 to $30 an hour, but then we're gonna fill in the gaps with part-time people. Let's talk about that. You need to be able to own a home. You need to be able to raise your family. We need to put our money into this. I think we need to go back to the table and say to the director, Diane, what do we really need here? Let's see what we need. Let's give people true wages with good benefits and then they can come in here. The, the, we have a problem and the solution isn't waiving residency. The solution is taking a look at the problem, giving proper staffing, and doing, with all due respect, and I appreciate everything that, that, you, that the manager does, but let's face it, as we talked about in our last meeting, we need to have true 21st century recruiting. With all due respect, and again, I mean this is a no slight to anybody, you don't recruit by going to career day one day a week or by posting in a hospital or going to a college where, and put posting on a, uh, a bulletin board where nobody is in there th during COVID. We've got uh, uh, virtual learning or a newspaper that nobody reads. We talked about putting real money into real recruitment so that we can really staff all of our departments. We need to really pay attention to the AMS department and give them the money and the funds and the staffing that they, we need. I would suggest that we vote this down tonight so that we can go to the table, sit down with the finance director and say, hey, we need to have $50,000 to hire a true uh, recruitment officer. We need to look at the AMS and say, what do we really, the AMS department and say, what do we really need here? Because otherwise this is so short-sighted, it's frightening. We're back again to this. What we're going to do, it's going to be the domino effect. See, we would love to have, I would love to have, the, we have such talented EMS. We need to have the people who are right here. We don't want to wait until you drive, if we have a true emergency or some disaster, to drive from Westmoreland County to take care of us. We need to have those folks here. And to be honest, what will happen is, this is going to be the domino effect. It's going to be department after department after department that's going to want this residency requirement waived. If the residents, if the taxpayer's money is good enough to, to, to fund a paycheck, this town should be good enough to live in. What will happen is we're going to turn into uh, what happened with the steel industry. The municipality is the largest employer right now. Wow. We will just one by one by one knock off each and every one of these departments and then that's going to be, you know, 150 vacant houses, 150 families that leave. These are our neighbors. These are the people that we see in Giant Eagle, in Eaton Park, and so forth. We want people that are invested in our community. I think we need to take a look at the problem, which is staffing and recruitment, and we need to solve that problem. The solution isn't waiving residency. If it was, the union would have been screaming up and down, and the union isn't but I recognize there is a problem. The solution is proper recruitment, and we can't put that on the director. That's not her, her responsibility. We need to have a professional recruit uh, re recruitment. So what I'm saying to you is, and I'll finish up here, we're going down that path. We keep going down that path, and we keep saying, don't, don't look behind the curtain. We're going to get rid of the senior center, the library, McKinley, this, that, and the other thing. Pretty soon... We won't have anybody here. If we vote yes tonight, then the residency requirement is gone and it'll be the domino effect and all of our departments will be gone and we won't three have minutes, our, three minutes. We won't have our friends and neighbors. We won't have our friends and neighbors who are the ones that are taking care of us. On the other hand, if we vote no, we go back to the table and we properly fund this and we properly staff it. 
So I would implore you to vote no tonight and let's go back to the table and really uh, solve this problem and staff properly. Uh, roll call. Councilman Pecora. Um, yes. Mayor Calabrese. No. Councilman Petrucci. Yes. Councilman Gutsy. Yes. Deputy Mayor Sapp. Yes. 7B approved. Can I get a motion for 7C? I'll make a motion for 7C, approve the option year with CWM Environmental Incorporated for 10 one to 9-20-22. May I get a second? Second. Any comment from the public? Any comment from council? Roll call. Mayor Calabrese? Yes. Councilman Petrucci? Yes. Councilman Getze? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sapp? Yes. Councilman Pecora? Yes. S item 7C approved. May I get a motion for item 7D? I'll make a motion for 7D. Yeah, 7D. Approve right. change number one for 2020 Plum, Plum Creek equalization control upgrade. May I get a second? Second. second. Any comment from the public? Any comment from council? Roll call. Councilman Petrucci? Yes. Councilman Getze? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sapp? Yes. Councilman Pecora? Yes. Mayor Calabrese? Yes. 7D approved. May I get a motion for 7E? I make the motion that we approve 7E, approve the change order number two with JP Environmental for methane piping replacement in the amount of $83,000. Can I get a second? Second. Any comment from the public? Any comment from council? Roll call. Councilman Getsy? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sapp? Yes. Councilman Pecora? Yes. Mayor Calabrese? Yes. Councilman Petrucci? Yes. 70 approved. Can I get a motion for 8A? I'll make a motion for 8A, Resolution 2021 of 08, -08 awarding sludge hauling and landfill disposal service to Westmoreland County, Westmoreland Sanitary Landfill. May I get a second? Second. Any comment from council, uh, from the public? Any comment from council? Yes, this is Deputy Mayor Sapp. Scott, can you elaborate on um, 8A, please? Um, on resolution um, number eight, Deputy Mayor, um, we went out to bid for a company to perform sludge hauling uh, for water pollution control. Um, Westmoreland uh, Sanitary Landfill was the, 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 the lowest responsible bidder. Um, in terms of what that service is, it, 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 it is as it sounds, it's sludge hauling. Um, I know our director of uh, water pollution control is on a call as well as Mr. Minsterman. Um, I'm sure they could provide any other uh, details you may you may uh, you may want. Okay, can can we hear from our municipal engineer? Absolutely, I think he's muted currently. There you go. Good afternoon. Hello, everyone. Uh, yes, this is a, a routine contract. This is the sludge that's generated from the treatment process, and so it has to be removed and hauled and disposed properly. So this is a routine contract that you award. Uh, and uh, this is the uh, lowest responsible bidder, uh, Westmoreland Sanitary Landfill. There's only a few landfills uh, and services that will conduct this work. So this is um, uh, an, an accepted contract and a recommended contract. Okay, thank you. That's a good explanation. Welcome. Roll call. 
On item 8A, Deputy Mayor Sapp? Yes. Councilman Pecora? Yes. Mayor Calabrese? Yes. Councilman Petrucci? Yes. Councilman Getze? Jim? Yes. Item 8A approved. Am I going to motion on 8B? I'll make a motion on 8B resolution 2021-9 awarding the 2021 CCTV inspection contracts A and B to the State Pipe Service Incorporated in the total amount of 288,609. Can I get a second? Second. Any comment from the public? Any comment from council? Roll call. Councilman Pecora? Yes. Mayor Calabrese? Yes. Councilman Petrucci? Yes. Councilman Getze? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sapp? Yes. Item 8B approved. Can I get a motion for item 8C? I'll make a motion for 8C, resolution 2021-10, awarding the two, 2021 Penn Hills WPC facilities equipment upgrade one to Frank Frankel Electric in the amount of 41805 contract number two to Westmoreland Electrical Service in the amount of 36200 contract number three to Westmoreland Electrical Services in the amount of 49900 contract number four to the total equi equipment in the amount of 17325 and contract number five to JP Environmental in the amount of $200,000. If, if I could, um, Mayor, and I want to make sure that it's okay with Rick, um, I would like um, potentially to have uh, the motion read differently so that contract number two to Westmoreland Electrical Services uh, is tabled. Um, there's there's some questions with, with the bid that they submitted. So I, I would ask that council entertain and uh, adopt resolution 2110, um, but we would be tabling contract two. Is that correct, uh, Mr. Engineer? Uh, yes, sir. Um, there is an issue with the bid, a couple issues actually that we think there is a problem with the bid specifically related to the qualifications of the contractor to do this work. So we are evaluating um, the services they offer as it's compared to the work um, that is being required. This was initiated um, mainly because the Westmoreland Electrical Services uh, requested to withdraw their bid. And in lieu of um, evaluating uh, the, the mistake that they made in the bid, as we looked into the services that they provide, they do not provide this service at all. So uh, we believe that we're going to find them um, not qualified to do this work and recommend to uh, disqualify their bid and go to the second bidder. So we're in that process now. So maybe if um, if we have to reread the resolution and leave out contract number two, uh, next meeting we'll come to you with a recommended uh, uh, responsible low bidder for that work in contract two. If, if it's if it's okay with council mayor, what I'm going to do is prepare um, 2110, but it's it's not going to have contract two in it. So that the the um, what is signed by myself and the mayor. And when it gets recorded, won't include that contract number two. Right, we're saying that you would like us just to reread it again and, and leave that number two out, right? Can we simply say that we would have item number uh, 8C with the exception of contract number two to Westmoreland Electric Services in the amount of $36,200? Agreed. Okay. Yeah. okay. Can someone simply say they motion, uh, they make a motion for? for uh, item 8C as I simply st just stated it. I'll make a motion as you stated it, agreed. Thank you, May thank you. may I get a second? Second. I'll second that. Any comment from the public? Any comment from council? Roll call. 
Mayor Calabrese on resolution 2110? Yes. Councilman Petrucci? Yes. Councilman Getze? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sapp? Yes. Councilman Pecora? Yes. The HC approved. May I get a motion for number nine under ordinances, 9A? I'll make a motion for 9A ordinance 2682 of 2021 approving no parking on May Street from house number 2201 to 2326. Can I get a second. Second. Any comment from the public? Any comment from the public? Any comment from council? Yes, this is Deputy Mayor Sapp. Did we did we already talk about May Street? Was this one of the streets that we discussed? Uh, th this was a this was a street that came to us from the Traffic Safety Committee. It was discussed um, a week ago. Um, upon the advice of um, Mayor and Council, I took a ride down there um, last week and took uh, took a little walk, talked to some of the residents down there. Um, the issue down there, quite honestly, is that if there's parking on both sides of that street, uh, there, a fire truck is not going to be able to get up and down that street. So what's being suggested is that uh, it's going to disallow parking on one side. Um, some of the folks that I talked to down there didn't didn't seem real bothered by that, um, but I really think there's more or less a, a public safety issue with if there's cars on both sides of the street, there's no way that uh, an emergency vehicle can get up and down that road. So I think that was the origin of this. And at least from the residents that I spoke to down there last week, they seem very understanding of that. I'm not saying that they're all going to, you know, necessarily love the idea, but I, I don't know what else the alternative really would be um, to, to that situation there. I thought that we discussed giving them written notice. The, the people who live on there, we were going to give them written notice. And that's why I asked twice if there was public comment, because I don't, you know, has there been sufficient notice given to the people that live on that street? I, did, I didn't mail a notice to every house, but I did walk the neighborhood and meet some of the folks, and, and I did have a letter with me, but I, I can't say that I talked to every every person on May Street. How yeah. many houses do you think that affects? Probably on May Street, there's probably, I'm going to say 10 houses, a lot, maybe 10 to 12 houses. Would anyone on council object if we uh, send a letter to these 10 or 10 houses and let them know that this is happening? Uh, no, I wouldn't object to that. And also, um, 9A doesn't, it doesn't read one side. So I would like to have it to read one side. If this says no parking on May Street from house number 2201 to 2326. So if we're going to vote on this, I would like it to specifically read um, on one side of the street. I think that's a good point. I would like to make a motion to table this. And in the meantime, I would like to have the ordinance rewit rewritten please to say which side we're talking about and I would ask that we kindly send a letter to each of these homes it's not bur burdensome so I'd like to uh, make a motion to table 9a may I get a second I second that mayor uh, roll call on, on the motion to table 9a councilman Petrucci okay yeah Yes. Councilman Getze. Yes. Deputy Mayor Sapp. Yes. Councilman Pecora. Yes. Mayor Calabrese. Yes. Okay, 9A tabled. And by the um, April meeting, I'll be able to report. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, Unless anybody objects, I would suggest that we do the items for consideration and the reports as one item. Does anybody have an item for consideration and or a report? I do. Okay, Councilman Getsy, please go. Uh, a little history. I'm on council because of the budget. I'm on council because after I retired, I attended budget meetings. Uh, and I was very disappointed in that I would make presentations where nobody would respond to me. I would make recommendations. Uh, I, I would go up with questions at the uh, budget meeting and not be permitted to ask all my questions. It was very frustrating to watch year by year go by and not get these things resolved. 
uh, I think people goes to the budget meeting thinking it's a hearing. It's not. The budget's already prepared. It's kind of a ritualistic formality that we go through every year that has really no meaning because the budget's done. I've never seen a budget change because of anything anybody said. If anybody wants to comment on the budget, this is the time to start doing it and not wait till December and expect to have any results. Uh, in addition to my uh, reasoning, I don't feel that I'm a political member of council. I feel like I'm a citizen member of council and uh, all I've done is change seats. So what I want to do is I'm going to bring up my issues with the budget and uh, let me start. The 2020 budget starts out saying the budget is, uh, what's the word here? No structure to the budget and goes into some reasoning why the budget has no structure. It points out deficiencies in the budget, uh, which I agree with. Subsequently, uh, the, the 2021 budget was approved, except I voted not to approve it. I did not get one comment from the public. I did not get one comment from council. I did not get a comment from anybody asking why I voted against the budget. I be, believe the people of Penn Hills are so conditioned not to having much input into what's going on that they just approve these things. And because I'm so interested in the budget, after the budget was approved, I sat down and started preparing a summary of the budget that I wanted to prepare to present to council. However, I found the task daunting. And I have a number of things here uh that are not very encouraging about the future of Penn Hills and its budget. And the rating this S P Global Ratings uh done in November of 2020 have some comments here which are disturbing to me. I'm I'm just gonna highlight a couple here. Penn Hills reported its sixth consecutive general fund deficit. Uh, Weak budgetary performance with a slight operating de deficit in general, in general fund, but a slight operating surplus in the total government fund level fiscal 2019. Very weak debt and contingent liability position with debt service carrying charges at 12.9%. Very weak. If the, there's a section here called negative outlook. If the municipality is unable to make the necessary expenditure adjustments to prevent the further deterioration of the general fund performance and causing reserves to fall to levels we no longer consider to be commensurate with its peers, the rating will most likely be lowered. Uh, return to stable scenario. We could return to the outlook to, to stabilize Penn Hills, make the necessary expenditure adjustments to maintain balanced operations while at the same time sustaining available reserves all else being equal. It goes on in, there are some nice comments, but this, the, the negative comments uh, disturb me. And when I looked at, oh, Penn Hill's budgetary performance is weak in our opinion. As a result of recessionary pressures relating to COVID-19 pandemic and lagging economic recovery, the projection is uh, not not encouraging. So with this stuff in mind, I would like to say that since I've been on council, with these reports, with what's going on, council and the manager have never gathered to go over in any degree to discuss the overview of the budget, to discuss anything in the budget. It's been a moot issue since I've been on council. Uh, when I when I voted against it, nobody bothered to challenge that. But this is the challenge. You look at this stuff and you say, are we just going to vote for this budget and walk away and not question these things? Uh, I, I just think it, it shouldn't be done that way. And I, I won't take the time to go through some of these other comments, but I brought them here because 
they're not very favorable. So when I started to do my report, which I didn't complete, I, I thought uh, this is what I am on council to do, and I'm going to do it one way or another. So what I am going to try and do is uh, organize a citizens budget oversight committee. Uh, and uh, if you say this is inappropriate for a councilman, remember I'm a citizen too. An oversight committee of 10 people. I want 10 people, four of whom have some background in accounting, finance management, uh, municipal funding, and proceed with that. That's a technical part. The other people may not feel that they're up to doing a budget review, but I have a plan to guide them through this so that even if you've never looked at a budget, you'll be able to look at, if you follow the plan I've drafted, you'll be able to look through the budget and uh, make some decisions. I would like to have somebody from the uh, school board on our committee so that they could be a guide and a reference point for budget examination. My plan would be to have a monthly meeting of at least two hours with, with the committee and to gather their comments and have a quarterly meeting with the manager and council to, to uh, review the comments and to provide answers or to look at uh, ways to deal with the issues that come up. At the end of the year, the people who come to council to talk about the budget should have some information that they can use uh, to either approve or disprove the budget. Uh, the people who are in this, on my 10-person committee, I ask for the discretion from the, the applicants to select them to, to uh, kind of ensure that there's a good representation from the community, both technically and uh, observationally. The 10-person committee can then redirect the budget committee to other areas that they may feel will be important and that we will continue to review and have oversight over this over this uh, budget. I feel the citizens over the years have been deprived of the opportunity to honestly and truthfully look at the budget and to get uh, a good a, a, a response from council, a responsible response from council on the budget. The fact that the 2020 budget opens up Noting the deficiencies in the budget uh, by the current manager is disturbing to me because there's been no follow-up on that and the second year 2021 budget doesn't show any much difference. I have reviewed the budget against Monroeville's budget and I have that somewhere here. Excuse me a minute till I find that. I just can't get my hands on uh, The highlight of the budget is our budget starts out with a three-page narrative of what the budget contains. Uh, Monroeville had a, what I think it was a 47-page explanation of what their budget contained. Their budget is about $2 million less than ours. Each department had put in a a uh, narrative about how the budget affects them and what the budget does. They have less money. They have like, what, eight times the amount of narrative explaining the budget and our, our budget explanation starting out negatively is not improved, nor do I see much improvement in a budget. So I'm asking the public from this seat right now to get in touch with me if you're willing to serve on this. I would like to pick the first 10 people, as I said, for their uh, abilities and for their interest in the community. They in turn can recruit anybody else they would like to work with them and that we will report on the budget, pay an interest in the budget and have some say on, on budget approval at the end of the year. Thank you. Thank you. Any, uh, any other member of council has an item for consideration or a report? I yes, just have something real quick. Um, I want to go over real quick. Uh, 
last week at the agenda setting meeting, we talked about um, the fire study and the library MOU, and I guess we were supposed to have a meeting about it. Uh, Mayor, did you ever set the meeting up? On I'm sorry, what's the question? We had on the agenda setting meeting last last week, we had talked about the fire study and the library MOU. And we, I, I believe it was you that said we were going to set these up for a meeting. Um, is there any? I think, I think the firefighters should be given an opportunity. That's right. Yes. Okay. Are we going to have this meeting soon? Are you going to set it up soon? Yes, I intend to. Okay, and the same with the library MOU. We talked about that also. We probably should take them separately because I think they're big issues because we're starting to chip away at every asset and every department that we have. So I think we need to give the public the opportunity. I just wanted to get, make sure that we get these meetings set up and uh, on the on our calendars uh, before it gets too late. Any other items for consideration or report from? Uh, I have another one. No, I'm sorry. We're moving on to the next one. Uh, may yeah. I have another one, please? No, no I'm sorry. We need to follow. We're going to follow the rules strictly. You've had your for opportunity. For the rest of council, for the rest of council, you'll get this either by email or in writing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pecora. Did you have anything? No, Mayor. I do not. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Sapp. Yes, I do. First of all, with all due respect to Councilman um, Getsy, I'd just like to say, um, with regard to our budget. I am very pleased with our budget. I've been on council since 2016. We um, have had a balanced budget. We also um, have a surplus this year. And I believe Sherry does a great job as well as um, our business manager and all of the department heads. So I'm very proud of our budget. And I also want to make it known and clear that council is welcome to go and speak with our business manager as well as our finance director on any given day that they have um, availability in their schedule and if they are not available on that day they certainly will um, make a availability for you to make a schedule to uh, or an appointment for you to go in and talk with them so our budget um, looks good we've worked very hard on our budget and any council person again if you have questions and i know several council people have been up. I've seen them in the office. Um, with all due respect, Councilman uh, Getsy talking over the budget as uh, well as myself is in you know, October to December. I'm definitely in with a fine tooth comb, and I've I spend several hours with both both Sherry and our uh, municipal manager going over our budget. So that um, door is an open door. So if you have questions, you are definitely more than welcome to to go in and with your questions and concerns. I have over the past five years seen um, our, uh, our opinions and suggestions uh, be taken into consideration and things have been changed on that budget, even with regards to the verbiage. So I just wanna say Councilman Getsy, um, I definitely respect you as a citizen because you know, um, Crescent Hills, we all used to call you the watchdogs over the budget. So um, I, I agree with you encouraging our residents to get involved and to look over the budget and be part of that because it is their money that we're spending. But again, um, our department, Sherry, municipal manager, our directors and council, we have done a phenomenal job in my opinion. Now moving on. Thank you on for your opinion. I spent 15 hours with the manager at the beginning of the year. I'm not finished. I didn't ask you for a um, response, but it's my turn and then you can talk. Um, also, I we're done. I just want to remind all of our residents that we have some wonderful upcoming events. Our Easter egg celebration, our Easter celebration and egg hunt is going to take place in Penthouse Park on, that will be Saturday, April the 3rd from 12 to 2. So get the children out. I'm sure they're tired of being cooped up and they're tired of um, being on the computer all day. So get them out, get some fresh air. They can wear their mask and I'm not sure if all of of the safety details that's going to go on, but you can certainly get in touch with the municipal manager or our uh, parks and recreation to find out what will be required to keep COVID safe. But again, mark your calendars for the Easter celebration and egg hunt on April 3rd, which is a Saturday from 12 to two. We also wanna keep in mind, yay, that our Penn Hills parks are going to be open for the season on April the 12th. So April 12th, mark your calendars, our parks will be open. 
third thing, our residents have expressed a concern about having an anonymous police tip line. I am pleased to say that we now have an anonymous police tip line and that phone number will be 412-342-0922. I'm gonna repeat that again. An anonymous police tip line. The telephone number for Penn Hills will be 412-342-0922. And Scott, if I don't know if it's up on our website yet, but I'd like to make sure that that's publicized so that all residents are made aware of our new anonymous police tip line. And I think that this is going to um, help people who are, are fearful, fearful of calling the police that they will call in to this tip line and you know, um, give the information needed to help keep Penn Hills a safe place to work and live. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I would like to say also that um, I appreciate your efforts with the budget and I would, would like to point out, we have had numerous meetings and uh, I specifically recall being in meetings with the manager and with the finance director and the door is open all year round, anybody, any, any, uh, resident can go in and meet with with uh, with the manager or the the uh, director. So please keep in mind that anybody can can do that. Um, with all due respect, I'm may not, I respond I'm, to that? I'm so, no, no, I'm Pardon? sorry that no, I'm sorry. Cut off, no, I no, I'm sorry. The rest of the evening. Yes, because I said we're going to follow the protocol. This I is not. The public, plan, this I is hope not the public plan. is paying attention. I hope the public is too, because we we have the time for back and forth. We we have a second meeting. We said we're going to have a second meeting each month, and that's what we've put in. And we'll have the back and forth at that time. So we're following protocol, and I said that in the beginning of this meeting that I was going to follow protocol. So uh, at this time, everybody has had their chance to speak, and now it's my turn. Um, I would like to say that I um, welcome the public, and I'm sure that the manager and the finance director, it's an open door. It's our budget. It's not council's budget or the mayor's budget. It's the budget of the municipality of Penn Hills. I would like to point out that uh, it's not just expenditures, it's revenue as well. And I hope that the uh, taxpayers are paying very close attention because what we're doing is we are little by little chipping away at every department we have. Uh, when people don't live here, they're taking their uh, tax dollars out of here. The water pollution control department uh, these are our neighbors, these are our friends. Be very careful, watch what's happening because it's very odd to me that you would spend $8,000 to get an appraisal for something that you're not selling. That doesn't make sense to me that anybody would do that. Uh, I would ask all of the people on this call and anybody in the audience to pay attention very carefully because we see things little by little, the senior center, and then we're having our buildings appraised. I think we're going down a, uh, a dangerous path. And I think that uh, March 15th, 2021 is the day that we can say, I was always very, very, I am very proud of the municipality, but we always had a separate budget. And I think that we were very short-sighted in some of the votes that we had tonight. And I would just ask everyone to keep a close eye and make sure that we're not giving the municipality away um, so I thank you for coming to this, attending this meeting tonight, and I ask you to continue to attend and watch very closely what's happening, because pretty soon we're not just going to be looking at our expenditures, we're going to have to question our revenues. Where is our money coming if we start to have everybody, if we start to welcome people to leave the municipality? I too am very happy, uh, I won't repeat everything, but I'm very happy that we are having the Easter egg hunt, I'm happy that the parks are open, I'm happy that people have come into uh, our in-person meetings. I thank you so much and um, I wish everyone a, a very good evening and uh, we look forward to you uh, attending our second meetings where we will have more back and forth. The voting meetings are structured according to the protocol and the rules of the charter. The second meeting is more of a uh, back and forth. With that said, I uh, may have a motion for adjourn, adjournment. Mayor, I make a motion that we adjourn this meeting. Thank you so much. This meeting is hereby adjourned. Have a good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Stay good night. safe.